one of the issues that happened, or the issue that happened right after the Pulitzer, uh, you know, publicity and all that uh, ramped up right after. Uh, then, before I knew it, this whole second wave of publicity came about because of an iPhone app that I had submitted. So probably six or eight months before winning the Pulitzer, uh, my wife and I had worked with someone to create a, an iPhone app with my cartoons. And it's, it was a little bit of a, you know, it took a long time to get it produced and it's a very simple, basic, basic app. But all it does, it's called News Tunes. And the only thing that the app does is it essentially plays the weekly cartoon and grabs a list of cartoons and you can see, you know, probably dozens, if not hundreds of, uh, or a hundred maybe, cartoons in this app along with some of the news stories that were behind the scenes that I used to research the cartoon. So you'll see the cartoon plus a bunch of links to investigate what I was talking about in the cartoon. Um, and so that app was rejected by Apple in, I think in December or January, somewhere around there. And it was rejected in, in the email that they sent, it quoted a section of their guidelines for submitting apps. And it said that it was rejected for, it was, quote, uh, defaming public figures, or no, ridiculing public figures. And so since it ridiculed public figures, they were gonna reject it and it wasn't gonna be on the iPhone app, or wasn't gonna be on the iPhone. And so I thought, well, shoot, if that's, that's what it does, that's what I do. I ridicule public figures, so you can't get around that. Because it, I mean, it, it said, you know, if you can, if you can modify your app so it doesn't ridicule public figures, you know, so I thought, well, what am I gonna do? Just turn off the sound or something? <laughs> so, um, so anyway, I kind of gave up on it or put it on the back burner and was gonna wait till later to try and submit it again or figure out a way to get around it. Cause I, you know, I wasn't gonna change my cartoons to pull out the ridicule cause that's what it is. Um, so, Long story short, the Pulitzer win happened and I was giving a lot of interviews and a journalist from the Neiman Reports, which is a, uh, it's tied in with Harvard uh, Journalism School and they, they produce a lot of great journalism and she asked me just a, one final question after she had interviewed me all about the Pulitzer and what I do and everything. And her last question was, well, what do you think about satire on the iPhone and the iPad and new devices. What do you think about the hope for the future of satire and all of that? And I hadn't even thought of this before. I should have been telling the press about it earlier, but she said, uh, so she asked that and, and I just, I said, well, honestly, I don't think the, it's not looking too good because they don't accept any ridicule of public figure. I was rejected. So suddenly her, you know, you could, I was on the phone, but you could hear her, her eyes lit up and she knew that was the story. So. Then she followed up with a whole bunch of other questions. So that became the story suddenly. So she wrote that, it suddenly was picked up by the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal and a lot of you know international press too. Um, and so that was suddenly the big news story. And the next day after her article ran, uh, I got a call from Apple, interestingly enough. And they said, uh, you know, you might wanna consider resubmitting that app. And it was almost like, uh, you know, it was like in Watergate, it was like a deep throat call, just like saying, hey, buddy, you might wanna try again. So, so I said, oh, okay, I'll do that, maybe, let me see. And, um, and the guy said, and once you resubmit it, call me. And uh, so I did, and I didn't change anything, didn't change a, an inch of code on the programming or anything. And um, we resubmitted it, and after resubmitting it, uh, I called the guy, the mysterious guy, um, who I didn't even know his name, I found it out later, but um, I called him back and I said, oh, we just submitted it, uh, is it there? And I hear in the background, I hear this little click, click, like, he's, like two keystrokes. He's like, oh, okay, you're good. <laughs> and it's like that easy. It's like, it's like you're visiting the uh, Wizard of Oz or something. So. Um, Anyway, that, that became a big story. It, it was not good publicity at all for Apple. It was great publicity for the iPhone app and for me as far as, you know, 
it, it had already been kind of an issue. Uh, I'll, I, I'll save most of this for the other talk, but um, that, that control over the media had become a big issue because people were worried, well, if newspapers are going downhill and the iPhone and the iPad are some examples of what's going to be the replacement, do we have uh, freedom of speech concerns because these guys are censoring stuff? So anyway, here's just a, a little clip uh, of Steve Jobs getting interviewed about this particular issue. Oh, let me go back here. And there's been a lot of, you know, there are, there are these controversies that flare up periodically about your app store rejecting things. And in some cases, you backtracked and, and changed your mind after there was an outcry and so forth, stuff like that. But isn't there a downside of you guys Here's what we do. acquiring, oh wait a minute, isn't there a downside of you guys acquiring all this power and saying no to some political cartoonist or no to mm -hmm. some political sure. candidate and also doing it in a black box that at least a lot of people on the outside have trouble understanding what the rules are? Mm -hmm. So what happened in these cases like that well, political candidate so here's what happens. who was mad? We had, a, we had a rule that said you can't defame other people. That's in your terms of service for yeah, developers? Yeah, you can't defame, of, you can't defame people. Determined by your app, the people that work at Apple, correct? I mean, it, Yes, it, it, but I think it would be determined pretty much universally among rational people. Right. Not, not some strange <laughs> definition. You can't defame people. And the problem is political cartoons got caught in that because by definition they defame people. Right. So we didn't think of that. That was an unintended consequence of a rule that said you can't defame people. So this guy submits his cartoon uh, late last year. The rule's still in place. He gets rejected. For other reasons, we realized that this is an unintended consequence. We changed the rule, I think it was in January, except for political cartoons. The guy never puts his app back in again. He wins a Pulitzer Prize. Somebody asks him. He doesn't actually run to the press. But somebody asks him, how come this isn't uh, on the iPhone? He goes, oh, I submitted it. They rejected it. He's a nice enough guy about it. And then these flurious stories get written several months after we changed the rule because we found out about an unintended consequence. So we are guilty as charged of making mistakes. So we're doing the best we can. We're, we're making mistakes. We're fixing them as fast as we can. And um, what happens sometimes, though, is that some people uh, lie. And they tell the press the story about oppression. Uh, and it gets written up, and they get their 15 minutes of fame because they hope it will convince us to, to change our minds, which it never does, but they keep trying to do that. And it's unfortunate, but we take it in the chin. That's part of what we do. And we don't run to the press and go, this guy's a son of a bitch liar. So and you get the, there's a lot to that. And full disclosure, I, that, that is edited, you know, I didn't do any, enough space in between, but that is cut up a certain amount, kind of like that Fox piece I was telling you about.